I got him, Jack. Give us a, give us a hand, will you? Come on, Dick. Come on, Dick. Come on, Dick. Come on, Come on, Dick. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come but Mrs. Barrington has authorized me to utilize this cottage as a military hospital. Hospital, indeed. You haven't a single patient. No, that's right. Now, besides, this form is filled in by Mrs. Barrington herself. Frail Manor Cottage, available for 20 evacuees. Now, come on, children. One, two, three, all of you. Lousy organization. Children. Children, get your bundles out. Ah, there's Mrs. Barrington. Now we'll see. Good morning, Mrs. Barrington. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Taking the children for an outing? Isn't that nice? You made me to put those 20 little evacuees in the cottage now, didn't you? But we've got our military hospital in here. Uh, 20? Oh, I must have added a naught by mistake now. Isn't that silly of me? <laughs> Take Fidget to the settings, John. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Well, Off you go, girl. Yeah. So what shall we do with the children? Rub out the naught and make two. We'll put one in the uh, wardroom and the other in the bathroom, uh, the box room. Oh, thank you. Yes, in a minute, dear. Now, which two children would like to go and stay with dear, kind Mrs. Barrington? <laughs> Now, I've made up my mind. Come along, you two. Come out, you two lucky ones. You mean him, don't you? No, I don't. I mean both of you. Oh, Evans, go into the house and get me some pillows, blankets, and eiderdowns. You know, the one with the hole it's in it. It's my Cigarettes. duty to remind you. Uh, uh, but... uh, one thing at a time, Doctor, please. Now, ah. this is um, uh, Ronald... Um, Mitzby. Uh, Mitzby. And... Um, Tony Andrews. Tony, Tony Andrews. Andrews. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? But I thought you said little girls. No, they've always been boys. Have they? Oh, well, it's all the same thing, mm. isn't it? Much obliged. What for? For having me. Oh, well, it's a pleasure, I hope. <laughs> Miss Fernley, that reminds me. I do hope that you'll find time to be on the committee. Of course they will, Mrs. Barrington. Which one? The Spitfire Fun a Spitfire Fun Bazaar, of course. Oh, uh, thank you. Now, Ronald, you must behave nicely while you're here. You see, it's very kind of Mrs. Barrington to have you. Bring them in ten bob a week, don't I? Oh. <laughs> Our orders say this is a military hospital. That's right, of course it is. Now, have you got a stretcher? We have. Good. Well, bring him in. Bring him in. You. Oh, there you are. The Mrs. Mrs. Barrington. Quite simple. Mrs. Just Barrington, it's session. Providence. Providence? Where? I don't see anything. We've got That's a patient at last. A patient? But mm. we can't take a patient. We've got two little evacuees. No, no, no. Mm. He should have come half an hour earlier. I, oh, poor chap. But look, he's been wounded. Why didn't you tell me at once? Take him in, of course. Take him in. Look at that poor fellow. Oh, Evans, uh, take those away. We won't be needing them. And tell Miss Helen to come here. She's in the kitchen garden. We've got a case. <laughs> Mr. Rumor here. Take it easy, then. Who is he? He's a Spitfire pilot. Hello, Fiona. Hello. What's your... Now, What's your... now, 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 now. This is no place for little boys to play in. Go to your room and stay there. That's right. Yeah, little chap. <laughs> so obedient. Aye, maybe. Yes, now the patient. Oh. That's right. You know the way you've been here. you the case? No. I'm Ronald. I'm evacuated. Oh, how do you do, Ronald? Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. It's in there. Well, thank you, Ronald. Come on, Betty. Morning, Andy. Good day, Miss Helen. Uh, do you want to report this? Uh, no, no, leave everything to us. We're under the war office, you know. I see. Yes, we know all the regulations. Don't we, Helen? Of course, Father. Good morning, Miss Helen. Good morning. Helen, my dear, he's an officer. He's got the CF, the D, the thing. Why didn't you put your uniform on, dear? Well, I hadn't time to change, oh. Mother. 
And you might have brought John's yellow pyjamas down. They do go over the roof. Yes, Mother. Yellow. Lemons. Lemons? Lemon. That reminds me you haven't got a lemon in the house. Are you ready for me, Doctor? I am ready. Well, I've set your shoulder, Helen. But there's a nasty great cut here I don't like the look of. Um, would you get me some hot water, please? Yes, of course. Put a double scotch in it, will you, please? <laughs> That'll come late in the treatment, and we'll both have some. Ah, oh, poor lady. You must have stuck a log floating on the loch. Is that what it was? Felt like the Queen Mary. Bad luck. Yes, it was. Or was it? Here's your uniform, miss. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, sir. Perhaps I can help you. <laughs> thank you, sir. to you anyway. What are you doing with my luggage? Your luggage? Yes, my luggage. Tell me, Sally, this is Thrill Cottage, isn't it? It is. Most extraordinary. How's that? That's oh, fine, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> well, how's the patient? Oh, grand, thanks. I'm in very good hands. Uh, may I use your telephone? I'm afraid I've got to report this. I'll go and ring up the aerodrome. Uh, sorry, it's uh, official. I'd better speak myself. Then I'll bring the telephone to you. Would you? Thank you. I oh, wonder if you could... yes, yes, in a minute, in a minute. Oi! Me, no, 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 no. I can't bother with things like that now. I've got a wounded man on my hands. I've got reports to fill in some other time. No, please, but you are yes. Mrs. Barrington. I know you've come about the ration cards. I no. know I've filled them in all wrong, but it isn't my fault, and I really cannot discuss the matter with you Madam, now. Madam, you're mistaken. Mm. I'm Dimble. Oh, are you? I'm so sorry. Yes, but I can't do anything about it now. But I've come to take possession of the cottage. But there is no cottage. No cottage? No, no cottage. Look, it says on that board, cottage to let. Oh, yes, that board. Well, I meant to take it down. <laughs> you see, things are all changed now. This is a military hospital. Madam, I've rented this cottage from Mrs. MacPhail and MacPhail, the estate agents. Look, here is a correspondence. I've paid in advance and my cheque was accepted for the Michaelmas quarter. Michaelmas, Michaelmas. When does Michaelmas come? Before or after Christmas? I never know. Oh, of course I remember now. Yes, yes. But didn't you get my letter telling you not to come? No. Hello, sir. Perry speaking. Yes, I'm afraid so, sir. Had to bail out and landed in the ditch. No, sir, no. Uh, lock, uh, lock, tay. Yes, lock, tay. That's right, sir. I know what we'll do. We'll send the boy over to the house and you can have his room. I can see you're a born organizer. Well, it does come rather easily to me. <laughs> <laughs> Little boy, come here. Uh, look, my child, uh, I'm afraid you're not going to have that room after all. This is Mr. Um, Dimble. Uh, Dimble. <laughs> He's going to have it. Well, how's the organization? Now, look here, Sonny. You must never use that word. Organization? No, no, no. Loud. 
<laughs> the other one. It's not a word we use in the country. No, 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 no. Think of all the lovely things in the country. The trees, the birds, the little animals. Go and fetch your bundle. Oh, Evans. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Evans, uh, take this boy away and put him in the maid's room. Hey. Uh, it's all right. She isn't there. Now run along and be happy. Remember, it's the one thing I insist upon. <laughs> Evans, it might be better if you gave the boy your room and you went into the attic. Very good, ma'am. All right, sir. If you put me through to the I.O., I'll let him have the dope. <laughs> right, goodbye, sir. I say, would you mind? Not a bit. Hmm? Hello? Flight Lieutenant Perry. Is that the I.O.? Oh, hello, Perry speaking. Yes. Spitfire FJ-112. On patrol off Montrose. Yes, Montrose. Spotted Dornier. 2,000 feet below. Got in two bursts, but lost him in cloud. Yes, yeah, that's right. Lost him in cloud. His, uh, his rear gunner hit my engine. Yeah. Yeah. Tried to get the, uh, bus back, but she, she caught on fire. Yeah, <laughs> had to bail out. Yes, I had to bail out. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm afraid she'll be a write-off. Yes, right. North bank of, uh, of Loch Tay. Okay. Uh, cheer up. Oh, your own work. Yes, the heart of the Highlands, a Heelands. <laughs> <laughs> you really like it? Oh, yes, I do, I do. Oh, it's charming of you to say so. It was my naturalistic period, of course. Oh, yes, of course, mm. of course. You know, if I may say so, it, it fits the mood of the room. Do you really think so? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Mind you, it had to go there because of uh, this hole in the wall. You see, this used to be John. <laughs> oh, there you are. This used to be John's workshop. He blew himself up. Oh, don't tell me. You're not a widow? A widow? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. John's still there. <laughs> Very much so. What do you mean, he's a chemist? Uh, no, 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 just nothing. He invents things. But he's not the John Barrington, the, the Barrington gunman. Well, that was a long time ago. I had to put a stop to all that. There'd be no cottage left. Oh. I've put him in the greenhouse now. He works there quite happily. And, of course, <laughs> no gunpowder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure I'll be very happy here anyway. Oh, you must. <laughs> Happiness is the one thing I insist on. So do come and have all your meals with us, won't you? Why, certainly. <laughs> of course, you'll have to find us as you take us. Oh, you're very gracious. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Streets ahead of anything we've had so far. At 3,000 feet, 25 direct hits at all angles of approach. <laughs> that was a stick from 5,000, straddle center of target. That's a beauty. Moving target at 6,000, too. Uncanny. Barrington's done it again. What's this? Accuracy goes to pieces above 9,000? Exactly, but a stabilizer would soon correct that. Barrington may have intended to fit one. You know how he works. I do. Never sends us blueprints, and we're not thought readers. Well, we'll have him down and talk it over. Good. As soon as possible, sir. This the best room you got? You must have thrown a sparrow out to make room for me. It's been big enough for me for the last month. Month? I'm here for duration. Where were you before? You're not Scotch. London? I'm from London. Really? What made you come to this hole? Dodging the Blitz? That's it. Baloney. Been a butler ever since you left the army? No. Could have told you that. Smart, aren't we? You can always tell a real butler. Butler's faces are white. They think the boss's pork, they're red. Yours is brown. You could have been a doorkeeper, for instance. Really? 
No, then you'd have had medals, not ribbons. Why didn't you get married? Because, how do you know? Easy. You've had to do for yourself. No woman in your life. You're free. Yet you quit London for this. Student of human nature, aren't we? Elevens. I just deduce things. Am I allowed to go where I like? Mrs. Barrington's instructions are that you're to consider yourself a guest. Paying guest. You're therefore free to go wherever you wish except the laboratory. Hey, what do they expect me to do? The laboratory is Mr. Barrington's workroom. Laboratory. Lab well, anyway, nobody's permitted to go in except Mr. Barrington and Mr. Trentley. Not even Mrs. Barrington. You might get hurt if you do. Huh. I think I'll give this dump the once over. Did you know that nobody was allowed in here? Sorry, mister. I live here. Oh, since when? Didn't she tell you either? Lousy organization. Oh, mustn't say that. Oh, I don't know. Why not? I'm inclined to agree with you. I like your dump. Oh. Thank you very much indeed. I'm glad you approve of it. <clears throat> You're not very good at it, are you? There is somebody supposed to be looking after you, isn't there? Hmm, that butler of yours. Yes, well, would you mind going back and being looked after again? Oh, do go away, please. That's not the way to lubricate an elastic motor. Well, it's the way I lubricate it. It's a cock-eyed way. Here. You've got to do like this. Oh, does that make an awful mess of your hands? What's the matter? Well, I really don't know. There. Now it's lubricated. Yes, it certainly is. <clears throat> you know how to put it in? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the lubrication. I'll go away. Oh, do go away, please. You're making me nervous. Well, no, but that ain't right, what you're doing. Here, you better let me. You've got to be shown if you don't know, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Just watch me, then you will. These ready-made planes you buy in shops aren't no good. Oh, that one is. No. What's your longest duration of flight? Oh, she stays up a long time. How long? Well, I've never actually timed it, but it's... What, a... are you a scientist? I made one that stayed up six minutes and 42 seconds. Tell me... How did you become such an expert in these things? Ah, uh, this is just an hobby. It's not what I'm really going for. Oh, what's that? Ever heard of Sherlock Holmes? Oh, are you a disciple of Sherlock Holmes? He was the greatest man what ever lived. <laughs> yes, he did live, didn't he? 221B Baker Street. You can't find the house now. You smoke a lot, don't you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. Easy. Hound of the Baskervilles, Chapter 2, Nicotine Stains. Ah, yes, but these stains are picric acid. <laughs> All right, then. Why have you got a copper for a butler? Got a what? Didn't you know? Your butler's a cop. Oh, oh nonsense. I mean, he could... Well, how do you know? Bet you're a tanner he is. And what's more, I'll prove it. Go on, call him. Evans! Where do policemen keep their watches? Well, I don't know. I never thought of it. I mean, uh, on, on their wrists? Or... Just you watch. Yes, sir? What's the time? Half past eleven, sir. It's impossible. It is, sir. Oh, Evans, go and get my, um, secateen, uh, scissors. Yes, madam. Well, I mean, she 
Pay up your tanner. He's your bodyguard, isn't he? Damn it, do I look the sort of man that needs a bodyguard? You're a big shot inventor. Of course you do. I will not have them putting policemen in my house. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll sack him. You mean to say you didn't know he was a copper? Well, of course I didn't. Mind you, it's funny business on here. You're a marked man. I'm a what? The study in Scarlet, you remember? Well, of course I do. What's that got to do with it? It's elementary. You're working on a secret invention. No, I'm not. I'm working on a cure for influenza. Flo, nobody's interested in that. Oh, aren't they? Crooks aren't. That's what he is. A copper turned crook. What could he be after? Where'd you keep him in the safe? Where'd you keep the diamonds, the wife's jewels? He might be in with the gang. What do you know about Mr. Trentley? Well, he's my assistant. I mean, he's been with me for years. Here, yeah, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to... Look here, Gov. If I'm to take this case on, you ought to do as I say. Okay. Come on, we'll try the plane out. You must have given her 150 by now. Oh, I can give her far more than that. 150? No more. All right, come on. Nothing new there. Just a minute, Weston. Look at this petrol tank. You can see it's three quarters full, and yet... That one's a cannon shot. You better have the whole tank out. But mightn't they have copied this bulletproof tank from us? They did, but how? Our new Barrington tank's only been in production three weeks, and this is identical. Well, what's Scotland Yard got to say? Somebody's been talking, possibly selling. You and my five fellows probably know what a crank Barrington is. Won't work in government premises, won't stand for police supervision. And has an assistant who is, shall we say, a little doubtful? Trentley. Nothing really definite against him. Educated in Germany, been back there several times, corresponds with people in Switzerland. Correct. You know as much as we do. Well, why don't you do something about it? But really, sir, we're not the Gestapo. Man alive, we're testing out a new bomb site at this moment, invented by Barrington. Did the Germans know about that? You must have this assistant fellow arrested at once. I'm afraid that's impossible, sir. First of all, we've no proof that it's Trentley. Secondly, if it is, we want to know how he gets his information to the enemy. Going for a little walk, Mrs. Trim? No, I'm off to Glasgow. Oh, Glasgow. Uh, Gla Glasgow, but what about lunch? There isn't going to be no lunch. Oh, no lunch. No, 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 no lunch. But for all I care, there isn't going to be no dinner, neither. No lunch, no dinner, but Mrs. Trim, you can't do that to can't us. Can't I? <laughs> I've given me notice to Mr. Evans. I'm not going to stay in this madhouse a moment longer. But Mrs. Trim, Glasgow, oh. I mean, you can't leave us without anyone. Oh, now look at what you've done, poor fellow. Now, I want you to enjoy yourself, do anything you like, but don't touch things. Do you hear? <laughs> never mind, never mind. Forget all about what a nuisance you are. Evans, what's all this about Mrs. Trim and Glasgow? It's you, Mrs. Trim. Goodbye, Mrs. Trim, and thank you so much for everything you've done. Oh, I couldn't, Mr. Trim. Yes, yes. Really, I couldn't. Oh, thank uh, you very much. Goodbye. Don't overwork yourself, Princess. The uniform of the wounded hero. And who are you? The paying guest. What's he talking about? There's a patient over in the hospital. Come down by parachute. He's got the tastiest bit of skirt you ever saw to nurse him. Miss Helen's at the cottage, sir. Mm, what a picherino. But we don't stand on earthly. Not with a spitfire pilot in the ring. He's sweet on her, eh? Such ideas. And a wee laddie like you. Oh, Mrs. Trim, you're a cook, aren't you? That's right. Would you come into my office, please? But, Miss Stokes, yes, I've been waiting... I'll see you in a moment. It's a bother. I brought my references. Thank you. Did my brother send me any message? No. You see, he's living at the cottage. I didn't think it was safe to approach him. Quite right. Did you warn him about the butler? We did. Do you think my brother will find him troublesome? No, he won't come in contact with them as much as I did. Very well. Well, I think you've earned a little holiday. I'll advise you in due course. Thank you very much, I'm sure. Helen, would you care to go for a walk this afternoon? A walk? <laughs> yes, it'll do you good. Well, yes, Alan, it would, but 
Well, there's my patient. Oh, yes, sir. Your patient? Yes. Well, thanks for carrying the box. It's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning. Good morning. Haven't we met somewhere before? I don't think so. Eh? I've got a wonderful memory for fishes. Well, I haven't, but I think I'd remember yours. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> my name's Trentley. Oh, yes, you're Mr. Barrington's assistant, aren't you? Yes, I am. That is laboratory. Yes, it is. Gosh, it must be interesting work. It is. I'm sorry there's no one allowed in. Oh, of course not. this room? Certainly not, sir. The door had been left open. I closed it. I never thought it'd come to this, did you? Oh, I don't know. I think you got off rather lightly. Ye gods, Alan, do you realize the whole cottage is packed out? I was referring to the vacuee kid. You know, you might have been landed with a dozen. Oh, I don't mind Ronald, but I'm not going to stand for all these waifs and strays. Oh, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do? Yes. I'm going to take a leaf out of Hitler's book and build myself an Ari. You know, ten floors up with a telescopic ladder. So that I can pull it up after me. Never heard it. Here, why have you been studying this altitude chart? Oh, good heavens, you're not still trying to prove to me that my bomb site's all wrong? As I've explained many times before, it is only 95% right. It isn't. It's absolutely perfect. Otherwise, we'd have heard from the Air Ministry of ages ago. Of course we wouldn't. They haven't had time to test it properly yet. Oh, rubbish. Good afternoon, Miss Stokes. Good afternoon. I'm glad you came in. We have the new recording you ordered. Oh, I should like to hear it. down to Freyo. My brother's there and he'll need help. I'll write to him today to tell him you're coming. He'll get it tomorrow afternoon. Very well. Hello there. Anything for me, Dimble? Uh-huh. Letter on the parcel. Uh -huh. What about the house? I'm going up there now. I can save your journey. Uh-huh. Now, let me see. Have I got everything? My hat, my gas mask, sandwiches, torch, my whistle. Where's my whistle? Ah, there it is. <laughs> yes. Works. Oh, Mrs. Barrington. Oh, Mr. Hudson. You told me you've been suffering from breakages, so I got you a wee present. Oh, how beautiful. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> you really are a don't quick shot, aren't you? Uh, John. Come on now. My old man. Thank you. Where have you been? Well, we've only bought the things we needed, haven't we, George? I've been waiting for you here for hours. I'm afraid it's my fault, Mrs. Barrington. I was quite fascinated by the scenery. It's lovely around here. Parcel, Ronald. Okay. Ellen's bought me a new suit, two dicky dirts, and a posh temper. Dicky, don't be vulgar, child. Run along. Ellen, bring my boots and help with the parcels, please. Now, let me see. Clutch out, break off. Engine gun. Come over and have a drink, Trentley. Charming fellow, isn't he? Oh, yes, I think he's wonderful. Yeah. Ain't love grand? Eh? Night of the Air marries beautiful nurse. I can see it in the Daily Mirror already. Oh, can you? Well, if you don't shut up, I can see a vacuee boy found with his throat cut. Betty, take these passes, will you? Yes. Is every man madly in love with you? I think your ideas of love and mine are not the same. You don't know my ideas. Yet. Here's to them. You know, George, I think you waste your time with the wrong sort of women. I never waste my time with any women. 
I quite believe that. <laughs> Go on, drink it up. It's good for you. <laughs> Must I really drink this muck, nurse? Every drop. You may even need another dose. Oh, he shouldn't have moved. You know, you two made a very pretty picture. Nurse and patient, eh? <laughs> no, I'm a romantic, sentimental sort of fellow, you know. How very uncomfortable for you. No, on the contrary. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't suppose you're in much of a hurry to go back to your planes, eh? Must be a tough job. I like it. Uh, you know, I take my hat off to you young fellows. Gosh, the speed of these modern machines, it must be terrific. Well, we get used to it, you know. You fly tornadoes, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Over 400 miles an hour, eh? Oh, marvellous. Land under 70, they tell me. That's right, who told you that? I don't know. People gossip, you know. And a lot of talk in the other direction, too. Defeatist. You know, I've even heard that these new type of fighters aren't a patch on the old spitfires and hurricanes. I shouldn't repeat that if I were you. Well, of course not. But it's dangerous talk just the same. I'm so sorry, Mr. Dimble. It's blackout time. All right, well, I'll be going. <laughs> yeah. Don't mistake the gin bottle for the medicine in the dark. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Dimble. Good night. I don't like that man. He gives me the creeps. He is a bit of a hangover, isn't he? Didn't you tell him rather a lot? None of it was right. Now, uh, what woman was I wasting time with just now? Your supper ought to be ready. If Betty's found a tin opener. Evans. Is, uh, is that the patient's supper? Yes, sir. Well, if you've got a lot to do, I'll, I'll take it over for you. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, Alan, how nice of you. Well, I was just going to take it over, I thought. Well, hurry along, or George will have his supper all cold. Oh, Ronald. I know, a proper twerp. The good Samaritan, eh? I was looking for you. Oh, why? Now, this car just came for you. Swiss stamp and a very curious message. That's pretty cool, Nerve. Do you always read other people's letters? Certainly not. This isn't a letter, it's a postcard. And postcards are fair game. 13KR, cross QB. Are you sure? Yes, see for yourself. That's torn, is it? I'm a little dense. What does it mean? If you must know, it's a game of chess we're playing. I can't see how it can possibly concern you. Right. That's the way you feel about it. Hello. I've uh, brought your supper. Oh, that's very decent of you. Well, uh, short-handed and... I thought that I... Find Helen here, eh? Well, bad luck, she's gone. Oh, don't run away. I've got work to do. More domestic duties? Now, look here, Perry. <laughs> I know. You'd like to knock my block off, wouldn't you? Well, have a drink instead. The gin's over there. Go on, fix me one. Uh, soup not too hot. Rissos. Bet they strained the coupons. Cherries. Well, I asked Helen for cherries. Mm, bless her little heart. Thanks. Cheers. I say, you must get awfully bored cooped up in that lab all day. I suppose you think that at my age I ought to be scrapping, don't you? No, not at all. No. I think you chaps are doing a grand job of work. Old, um, old Barrington's uh, considered rather brilliant, isn't he? He's always struck me as being rather childish. Oh, has he? Barrington has the finest scientific brain in the country. Where do you think our new petrol tank comes from? Oh, did he do that? Yes, he did. Did you have a, have a cannon gun? He did that too. Mm, okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you approve. And now we've invented a bomb site that will... Is that someone at the door, Clinton? It's, it's Dimble going to bed. Dimble? Hmm, he's always around, isn't he? She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. You know, I don't think I want to hear about your bombsite, Trintley. 
No, perhaps not. But I'll be getting along. Good night. Good night, Trenty. Damn it, man, can't you make up your mind? First of all, you want the thing, and now you don't. I'm all ready to put it into large-scale production. Only waiting for the word go. But we can't give it. We still want it. It's the finest bomb site yet. Barrington refuses point blank to come to London. Listen, my son, you can't give John Barrington orders. I've known John for 20 years, and he's the most... Well, he's a temperamental cuss. I wired him to come down here. And this is what he dishes out. Far too busy waste time coming see you. Stop. Come here if you like. Stop. Beer still good, but no cook. Stop. House full of evacuees, invalids, and unmentionables. Stop. Thanks for Butler. Have given him notice. Sea Hound of Baskervilles, Chapter 2. Stop. John. Doesn't make sense to me. Nor me. The man's a genius, but a school kid at heart. I've looked it up, Mr. Forrest. Chapter 2 is about a butler who is introduced into a household to look after some documents. Looks like your man's been spotted. Better come clean, Inspector. Well, sir, I placed one of our men there as butler to keep an eye on things. Oh, you did, did you? That's just the one thing John Barrington won't stand for. Calls it official interference. So do I. A matter of Scotland Yard routine, sir. Routine? Butler? Ah, expect John to swallow a pill like that. Might have wrapped it up a bit better. It's a question of safety, sir. Get me Barrington at Thrail. Safety? There have been a number of leakages up there. He ought to leave Scotland. He might listen to you, sir. So I'm to go and get him. Is that it? It's vital to us. Cancel that call for Thrale. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, we've got a man at Thrale, too. And we went to a lot of trouble to wrap up our pill. That's grand, I said, take it right along. Mr. Perry. Yes, Ronald? Will you come over here, please? Sure. Is this all right? Yeah, it's going on fine. Mr. Perry. Hmm? Look, you may think this a bit daft, but... Well... Well, come on, cough it up. Um, could I have a photograph of you? What do you want to do, swap it for a Clark Gable? No, I wouldn't swap it for one. No. Just like to have one, that's all. To be flattered, Ronald, but I'm afraid I haven't got a photograph. I'm scared stiff of a camera. Started life as an errand boy. Sea press. Where's John? Sea press, John. Uh, he tells you somewhere about. Uh, excuse me, there's the ladder man. <laughs> Gotta keep these Philistines away from my books. Hello, what the devil are you doing here? Happen to be in the neighborhood? Yes, you never happen to be anywhere in your life. You're right. Maggie, Maggie. I did want a quiet chat with you. I know this infernal bazaar has made this house more of a lunatic asylum than ever. Well, there's one place they daren't invade. Come along. <laughs> that fellow looks like Lewis Cartoon of Ernest Forrest. It is Ernest Forrest. Cabinet minister was in the house. <laughs> I wonder why. Yes, and, and, and what do you mean by that ridiculous official telegram? Urgent, priority, secret, ministry of supply. What are you doing? Are you working there or something? Yes. What, you who fought red tape all your life? I'm still fighting it. It isn't as bad as I expected. Well, things have come to pretty pass when you're on the side of the angels of Whitehall. Here, put that down. Don't you know you're not allowed to touch anything in here? Sorry, teacher. <laughs> Look, John. Pulling together is no catchword. It applies to everyone. To men of ideas, just as much as to fitters and electricians. 
We're going to win this war. We can't afford to have leading scientists pottering about individually, just trying to find out things. We need new weapons. We've got to have an answer ready for every new trick of the enemy. Research must be carried on night and day. Yes, but I'm doing research work all the time. With one assistant, we could give you a hundred. Every hour's delay makes all the difference. And so? And so I've come to tell you that that bomb site of yours doesn't work. Well, that's impossible. It's a wizard of a thing, up to a point. It's up to about uh, 10,000 feet, you mean? To be precise, 9,000. <laughs> that infernal argumentative Trentley must have been right after all. Well, I know nothing about that. All I can tell you is that we're trying to get hold of an American bomb site. Oh, no, that's fantastic. I mean, give me a chance to get it right. I'll, I'll do it in a couple of days. My dear fellow, you won't come to London. Well, I mean, they can send it here. No, no, the Air Ministry won't agree to that. They say they won't take the chance of letting the thing out of their sight. But even with the butler in the house? Not even with the butler in the house. All right, you can tell them that... That you won't touch it. No, I'll show him just how hard an individualist can work. That's the stuff. You can come to London with me tomorrow. What, tomorrow? Yes, after all, I'm doing you a favor. You miss the bazaar. <laughs> yes, I never thought of that. Well, 9.30 in the morning, Glasgow Central Station. All right, how are there? Don't you be late. Oh, no, 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 I'll start at dawn. I'll do even that to miss this bazaar. <laughs> Goodbye. Can't you stay for the show, sir? No, I'm afraid I can't. It's really rather important. The rifle range isn't any use without the animal pictures. You promised to get them ready. And I always keep my promises. I'll start working on them now. Cross me heart. Slip off and get me a bit of wire, will you, Ronald? OK. Yeah, you're quite sure you're a member of the opening moves? Yes, I think so. PQ4, PKK2, PK3. Brings me. Only want a piece of wire. You're not allowed in there. Who says so? I say so. No one's allowed in there. In there? I should think that way. Even I am not allowed in there. That's all you know. What about his friend, the cook? The old trout that walked out on you. The old trout? Whatever is the child talking about? Excuse me, madam. I think he was referring to Mrs. Trim. Oh, Mrs. Trim, our trout uh, cook. There, and I'll say I'm a liar. <laughs> ditch, ditch, sonny. Baby. Ditch, ditch yourself. She went in there the morning I came here. If cooks are allowed to go in there, why can't I? Mrs. Trim only went in there to tidy up. That's what you say. Well, Betty, are you the palace pigeon feeder? Only since Mrs. Trim left, sir. Mrs. Trim did it, eh? Oh, yes, sir. Mrs. Trim was very jealous of her pigeons. She wouldn't let anyone go near them except herself. Well, now that she's gone, do you mind if I feed them sometimes? I'm very fond of pigeons. Why, oh, certainly, sir. You can begin now. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Helen, Helen, you seem too busy even to speak to me these days. I'm not jealous, are you, Alan? Jealous? Me? Oh, no, certainly not. That's nonsense, no. I just don't want to see you making a fool of yourself. Making a fool of myself? Well, you're practically throwing yourself at this fellow. I, I don't mind. I'm just speaking as your father's colleague because, well, it's awful. I mean, you chase the fellow all over the place and it's, it's becoming, becoming obvious. Uh, even neglecting your allotment. But you can't take care of an allotment and a patient at the same time, Alan. And don't you think the patient's more important? It seems to depend upon the patient. Alan. Oh, hello, George. Hello. Hello, Trenty. They let you out. Well, that's wonderful. What's wonderful? Your hair. Would well, do you like it? I wasn't quite sure about it. Well, don't you like it? No, I don't like it. He doesn't like it. Oh, I am disappointed. Oh, I shouldn't bother about that. I don't think Trentley's very interested in that sort of thing, are you, Trentley? What do you mean? Well, your uh, 
Not exactly uh, ladies' man, are you? I'm not a philanderer, if that's what you mean. It's a nasty one. I say, I've got some good news for you. I'm going back tomorrow. Yes, that is good news. Yeah. Still, a uh, lot of things can happen before tomorrow. Yes. Uh, Mother's cooking the dinner. Season to taste. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Just a pinch of mustard, I think. Now then. What exactly are we making, Betty? Do you remember? Ah, dinner Kenman. A tilcher can a cook. Ah. Well, anyway, it looks very good, doesn't it? Another drop. Yeah. Just about the right constituency, don't you think? Uh, now, Ronald. What? He's right. Something definitely wrong with it. I know, eggs. Eggs. <laughs> We've forgotten the eggs. <laughs> the eggs are gone, Mum. Gone? Where? There were six in the box, Mum. I give you my word, I put them by special. Oh, never mind, it's wartime. We'll do without the eggs. See who it is, Alan, will you? Good evening, Mr. Trentley. Good evening. Ye gods. Heavens. This is Mother's fault. I'm not late, am I? Not a bit. Oh, what a relief. Mrs. Barrington invited me to her party. Oh, don't tell me it's informal. Oh, it is a party. We were just too lazy to dress, that's all. Oh. <clears throat> well, well, we're very elegant this evening, aren't we? Came to keep your bedside manner for those who need it. <clears throat> Mrs. Barrington's compliments. She would like to see you in the kitchen. Oh, delighted. Miss Fernery. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Barrington. Oh, Miss sweet of you. I, I felt sure you had some special reason for asking me. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You see, it's Mr. Perry's last mm. evening, and we wanted a specially good party. Oh, how are you getting mm. on? Oh, splendidly, really. Mm. There are just one or two little points that perhaps... Well, uh, uh, can uh, I help you? Oh, oh, mm. no. Oh, you mustn't. Mm. No, no, after all, you are a guest. Have my penny for your Austria. I mean, your... Well, that is all very nice. Congratulations, Marguerite. Much better than the 57 varieties we've been eating for the last few days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John, but I don't deserve all the credit. Oh, it's fine. That'll be the coffee. Run and open the door, Ronald. He appears to be in difficulties. I thought we'd have coffee all together here. I don't believe in segregating the sexes. Do you, Miss Fernery? Well, I don't believe in co-education, if that's what you mean. By the way, Mrs. Barrington, what's happened to that Mr. Dimble? Coffee, madam? Uh, no, thank you. He's driven over to see Lock in Castle. I told him the lovely story of the ghost. He's going to write a whole chapter about it. But you've sent him to the wrong castle, Mother. The wrong castle? Don't be ridiculous. Everyone knows that when the laird of Loch Inbar dies, or gets married, I forget which, the piper paces the battlements. The piper of Loch Rea? Mother, you've sent him on a wild ghost chase. Goose, dear, goose. Never mind. Loch Inbar will look lovely in the full moon. Won't it, Dr. Fus uh, Truscott? There was a full moon, which there isn't. And if he went the right way, which he hasn't, he took the Glasgow Road. Did he? Who told you? I have ways of finding out things. Just a talk with you. Are you going out? That must wait. Who are you? The person you were going out to meet. In fact, the meeting was called by my instructions. I wasn't going to a meeting. Where were you going then? 
Have you made enough mistakes? Or don't you bother to obey instructions any longer? I was going to spend the evening at the musical society. I know, I know, but now you're not going. We've no room for fools or failures. Miss Stokes should have told you that. Miss Stokes seemed quite satisfied with me. And she's more easily pleased than I am. I suppose you know the exact position I occupy? I think I do. Good. And perhaps you'll tell me why you left Thrill? Because of the butler. I see. Then you're an even bigger fool than I thought. Do you realize what you've done by running away? No, I don't see it that. It never occurred to you or Miss Stokes that you might be followed. Hmm? <gasps> Where have you been since you returned to Glasgow? Only to the agency. Only to the agency. Hmm? That's exactly where they would have liked you to lead them. Perhaps this house is being watched now, and I'm here. Do you realize what my arrest would mean for you, for all of us, for the right? <gasps> what can I do? Stay here until you're instructed by me. Keep your mouth shut. Don't answer the telephone. Don't even move. You're a menace to us all. Well, don't move, anybody. I'm afraid I've got some work to do. I hope you'll all excuse me. Good night, Miss Fenley. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh. Say, what the devil's that row going on? Oh, that's the piano tuner. But the piano doesn't need tuning. Mr. Lydia, pianos always need tuning. <laughs> oh, by the way, sir, shall I see you in the morning? I'm generally up at the crack. No, I'm afraid I'll be gone long before that, so goodbye and good luck. I thank you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> Glad you got that thing fixed. Yes, yes, it's being let out tomorrow. Isn't it, nurse? Yes. Right, well, Goodbye, right, sir. Oh, Evans. Evans, did you remember to put in any cigarettes? I did, sir. Good. You better shove that in the car now, so that I shan't forget it. Very good, sir. I'll call you at half past four. No, no, no. I'll be working in the laboratory. Get some sleep on the train. Might I ask you something? Would you give this to my mum when you go to London? 27 Tollington Way. Well, of course, Ronald, I'll post it in town and then... No, I mean, give it to her. Well, I don't get to London till late, you know. Only it's Mum's birthday tomorrow, and I've got a little present for her. <laughs> All right. I'll see if she gets it. That's a promise. What is it? Oh, don't... nothing much. Just something I picked up. It ain't wrapped up yet. <laughs> you give it to Evans. Tell him to shove in the suitcase. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Tired? Yeah, I think I'll go to bed. Good night. Good night. <coughs> Come and have one for the road. No, thanks. I never do. You sure? Yes, thanks. Lovely. You know, Helen, I'm uh, very grateful to you. Nonsense, it was fun. And yet I wonder. What? About you. How do you mean? The way you look sometimes. As if you were diving onto an enemy plane. You'd never let him get away, would you? <laughs> well, I, I hope not. <laughs> Funny. Look. New moon. Have you uh, wished yet? No. Oh, go on. Shut your eyes and make one. Well, that wasn't what I wished for. Wasn't it? You must be mad. Let's try again. Nonsense. You're incorrigible, and I'm going. Oh, no, don't go, Nessie. Don't leave me. I don't think I ought to be left. Why? Are you frightened of the dark? Yes, a little. <laughs> Good night. Sleep well. Good night, nurse. Helen. Oh, Helen, you frightened me. What's wrong? You can see the cottage from here. Is that all? Well, you must learn to look at these things scientifically. Remember the laws of biology. 
Damn science and blast biology. Can't you put it a little more clearly? Yes, I can. Helen. Yes? Helen, I'm sorry I did that. Why? Because I had no right to. You, you and Perry have made that quite clear. Alan, I didn't kiss George. He kissed me. And perhaps I don't want you to apologize. Don't you? No. Well, well I love you. I love you, too. Say that again. I love you. I'll go and ask her father. <laughs> Could I have a word with you? Oh, hello. Yes, certainly. But before you start, do you know why Ernest Forrest came here today? No. He came to tell me that my bomb site isn't quite right. Oh. Isn't it? No, it, it, it appears it needs stabilizing. I, um, <clears throat> I think you did mention it to me. Yes, I did. Yes, well, apparently you were right for once. Oh, well, uh, look, I've, I've got a, a little thing over here. I've just worked out. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> a gardoscope. Where did you make this, Alan? I just finished it. Oh, well, this, this slots into my bombsite. Yes, it, it can be switched on at, uh, uh, at top altitudes. Well, it's exactly what we need. I'll get them to test it out. Oh, thank you. Well, that's all right. I mean, you're saving me a lot of trouble. If they pass this, we'll call it the Barrington Trentley bombsite. Bang the Barrington Trentley bombsite? Well, that's, that's fine for nice of you. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm only too delighted. After all, we must all, um, <clears throat> we must all work together. <laughs> yes, sir. You will take this with you tomorrow, won't you? Yes, you bet. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, could, could I tell uh, Helen about this? Helen? Why Helen? Well, um, well, I, well uh, she... Uh, oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. So you tell her by all means. And uh, Alan, it's, um, it's all right with me, you know. Oh, fine. Thank, thank you very much. Good night. Good night. It's all right, Evans. You can lock up now. Very good, sir. All set? Yes, all set. He's alone. Who's there? <laughs> Mr. Barrington!
I'm sorry to be late. There's a raid on. Buses won't budge. Were you invited? Certainly. As a man with a true love of beauty, here I am. Come in. He's not here yet. No, I can't understand it. I thought Berlin was satisfied, but now it seems... That would be Sarah True. Good evening. I see I'm in good time. I don't seem to know you. This is the music box? Yes, it is. But the shop's closed and our society is here to rehearse. And I've been sent to join you. Tell me, in the musical world, true love of beauty is a password, isn't it? Won't you come in? Thanks. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce a distinguished friend. Is everyone present as instructed? Yes. And where is Sarah Trim? Oh, I forgot about her, but Just she'll as be you here. forgot to inform us of the Chelf and Peace Plan document and the sailing of the King George V. Trim is not here because I ordered her not to come. And it happens that the butler Thrale is Detective Brownrigg of Scotland Yard. But I... And such gross carelessness is inexcusable. Does the name Von Hellinger mean anything to you? Yes. Good. Then we can get down to business. It's an honor to have you here, Herr Hellinger. Von Hellinger. I'm going to investigate the activities of the past few months. After that, I shall want to have a talk with you privately. I will question each member separately. I'll begin with you. The others wait outside. Promise not to shout. I'll take this thing off. I wouldn't waste my breath. What's left of it? You see, I happen to know where I am. Yeah, you do, eh? Yes, but not who you are, or why I'm here, or why you're behaving like this. Yeah, you'll know soon enough. Oh, Norton, uh -huh. did you get rid of his car all right? Yes. You have any trouble? No, nothing at all. Small bloke pinched your car. I hid in the back. I can get you two out of here and find my way back. I doubt it. It's rough going. And you don't strike the road till you get... I thought of that. I got a trail fixed up. A what? A trail. I threw out your suitcase things. Shirts, pyjamas and collars. Oh, thanks very much. However, well done. Look, get a move on. Strike the trail. It's the best part of 30 miles, I'm afraid. It's true. How many? 30? Yes, less to thrail. Call at the nearest cottage, ask for help. Go on, get going. Okay, girls. Go! I told you it'll work. He's here, you're safe. Now don't be a fool, Ronald. Get back. I 
thought I told you not to show up. It's all up with you and you know it. He can take you gangsters on one-handed. She'll take his gun, I've got his specs. What's up? Well, Ronald, how did you get here? I hid in the car. Oh, it was clever of you. Anybody else know anything about it? No. Time up. But you don't understand, Mr. Perry. He's the crook. He's the man who kidnapped the girl. Please help me. Shut up! Mr. Perry, you don't understand. He kidnapped the gum. He's a crook. Here, stop that, Perry, or I'll... Take him away, Henny. Go! Come on. Why, you'll what? I'm giving the orders here, Barrington. God, how you must have enjoyed that. Think so? Do you mind telling me what all this is about? Certainly. Cigarette? Oh, thank you. I'm taking you to, uh, got it? Mm -hmm. Berlin. Berlin? Oh, that's damn funny. Hmm. Glad you find it amusing. Yes, I, uh... Thanks, I haven't read my Oppenheim lately, but don't tell me you're a German spy. Agent. Spies work for the other side. Oh, nice point. When do we start? We leave by seaplane from the lock tomorrow night. You know, uh, your London trip hurried things up a bit. Well, that's fixed him. Sure enough, Ronald. You can go now, Haney. There's still 24 hours. You'll never get away with it, you know. What an hope you've got, you dirty arm. Why not? You've made everything almost too easy for me. Yes, he's perfectly right. They think I've missed the train. I generally do. I've gone on to London with Evans in the car. Exactly. You'll enjoy your stay in Germany. They're looking forward to your being most helpful. In what way? You'll work. What, work for the blasted Nazis? That's enough, Bennington. See you tomorrow night, Barrington. You won't go away, will you? Henning, get on to Glasgow. Is it the kid? No. Anything serious? Might be. Something my sister ought to know about anyway. Go on. Thirdly, your organization has been spending too freely. One can't bargain for information. No, but one can question exorbitant outgoings. Exorbitant. I spend no more than I consider absolutely necessary. You surely can't I'm think... I'm only telling you Berlin's opinion. Fourthly, there's this Barrington job. There, I've carried out your plans step by step. Haining and Norton have both gone to Thrale. Only to find that Barrington has started for London. Started, perhaps. By now, he should be safely in our care at the mill. You see, we are efficient sometimes. It merely meant advancing our plans 24 hours. On whose authority? My brother's, of course. Your brother had no right to interfere with my plan. What else could he do? Let Barrington go. He could have prevented him. Your brother's a fool. I won't have my brother insulted. Is the time to stop him? No, they'll have got Barrington by now. But it's only until tomorrow evening, if all goes well. If all goes well. You're thinking of the seaplane on the loch. Naturally. Anyway, I don't like it. And that's all tomorrow. And the whole thing is very dangerous. I don't agree. The mill is miles away from anywhere. There's not even a road to it now. Hmm. May I offer you a drink? I'll have a whisk and soda. I said we were not to be disturbed. What 
How ridiculous. Of course I can't see him. Will you deal with him yourself? Safe when? Splash. No, Herr von Hellinger. Your criticism made me begin to doubt my organization. My own abilities, in fact. But I don't doubt them any longer. Your whiskey. I think you're going to need it. What is all this? The gathering of the clans. Excuse me. We're on the fourth floor, you know. Are we? Mind if I have a look? There it is. Put out that light! Shut that door! Stop it! Don't let it go! Stop it! No good, Gov. They're too tight. Yes. Ronnie, did you see that gadget over there? It's got a knife on it. No good for me, I'm handcuffed. But if I gave you a great shove, do you think you could crawl over to it? I'll have a try. Go on, have a prod. Collect Mrs. Trim at number six Mulholland Road. Very good, sir. She won't answer the door, so we'll just go right in. You look worried, Inspector. Aye. Why did you tell us to let the chief of this lot get away? I didn't. But, Mr. Dimble, you distinctly said that we were not to stop her. Yes, but it's a him we want. She's only a subordinate. We want a head, and she'll lead us to him. Poor Riley. Sir. Look, I want your help. I want the name of a loch in the neighborhood of Thrail. All I know about it is that there's an old mill on it somewhere. Let me see. It'll be either Loch Catherine or Loch Foley. Why, of course, it's Loch Catherine. There's no water mill there. There's not many of them left around these parts. How long will it take us to get there? By car? Oh, about three hours. Terrible road. Right. Now, collect your men and get going. And you'll need military assistance. For besides your prisoners, there'll be an enemy plane to collect, touching down in the loch tomorrow night at dark. Off you go. Leave it to us, sir. Now, what do we do? We follow Miss Stokes. You know where she's going, too? I think so. It's all right. Hello, yes. 
She did. The three road, isn't it? All right, thanks. Well, it's one of two men. But you don't know which. No, but you soon will. Come along. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare this bazaar well and truly laid. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> well, enjoy yourselves, everybody. Spend a lot of pennies. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Are you sure Ronald went to town with my father this morning? Positive. I saw them leave together. You must have been up early. Yes, I was. Back to Vaz. No, thank you. All right. Hello, Mother Hello, dear. How do you do? How do you do, Lady McIntyre? Oh, we mustn't miss the children singing. Madam. Sir, I am engaged. That makes it all more interesting. <laughs> I say, you could lay a table on that, couldn't you? <laughs> Oh, well, let's go and play some darts. All right. I know, that's the idea, Fethid. We've got to get them both. Right, you know. Now then, get ready. One, two, three. Stop! Get over there! It's all up with us, but we'll get Barrington. Go on. Two birds with one stone. And in conclusion, I can do no better than to quote the words of our great Prime Minister to the gallant boys of the RFA. Never have so much owed so many to so little. And we are proud to have as our auctioneer today a real live Spitois pilot, Wing Lieutenant Perry, CFD. <laughs> Oh, 
Now let me see. I think it is, sir. Give him that. Yeah, that's right. What is it, a banjo lady? No, a warming pan. I'll take your word for it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what am I offered for this um, article? No home complete without one. You warm your beds or fry your sausages. Now, who'll start me off? 25 shillings. 25 shillings. Thank you, sir. Any advance on 25 shillings? 30 shillings. 30 shillings. Thank you, madam. It'll come in very handy on your honeymoon, especially if your husband's a commercial traveller. Any advance on 30 shillings? 30 shillings. Going once, twice. 35 shillings. 35 shillings. Thank you, madam. 35 shillings. 35 shillings. Going, going. It's in the bed, the lady over there. Thank you. Now, uh, here's a um, thing, very pretty thing. Uh, who will uh, who start me off? One pound. One pound, I'm dead. Any advance on one pound? At, at, at two, two pounds. Thank you, madam. Two pounds. <laughs> Two pounds, I'm bid, for this magnificent object d'art. Now, any advance on two pounds? Five pounds. Five pounds. Five pounds. Five pounds. Mrs. Bellington. I... Most awfully sorry. I feel a bit groggy. I... I think it's his arm. Would you, would you mind taking over? Oh, poor boy. Finish the slot, then I'll take over. Yes. Five pounds, I'm Bill. Any advance on five pounds? Going. Going. Sixpence. Sir, you must be joking. Have you looked carefully at this beautiful? Oh, 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 Everybody in the house. One of that window and one of the other. Let no one pass. Here, you. You better take that man inside. Alan! Get a doctor, someone! You all right? Yes, I'm all right, sir. Now, give me that gun. I'm going with you, Doc. Oh, no, you're not. Heaven, let's take him inside. Tell the others. Hold on, sir. Uh, in you go. You can't get past, sir. The gates are guarded and there's half a dozen men about the ground. Good. Here, Alan. Any luck? No, sir. I've searched all the booths down by the gate. Very well, carry on.
one more squeak and I'll let you have it. Ronnie! Ronnie, is that you? Where are you? Ronnie! Ronnie! Now listen. When I take my hand down, you shout, Gov, I'm in here. Understand? Gov, I'm in here. Ronnie! Ronnie! Go on, shout! Ronnie, is that you? Where are you? Gov! I'm in here! Louder! Gov! I'm in here! Where are you, Ronnie? Ronnie! Drop that gun, Bank. Better give in, Pity. It's all up, you know. Drop that gun, or I'll let him have it. I believe you would. Get this bank and get it quick. Go to the gate. There's a car there, see? Tell the police the, the superintendent wants it. Drive it to the back of the tent here. Now, I'm going to watch you all the way, Barrington. So don't try any tricks, get me? All right. Get going, come back. Get going. Drop that gun, Perry. It's all over. 